Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Let's continue our series today. Uh, the lecture will be a little bit long as we are going uh, to understand and to go uh, through the uh, FMC configuration tabs and what are the features that FMC can uh, provide. Actually, this type of configuration on the FMC itself there is like uh, no related to FTD directly. So, uh, with the FMC configuration, yeah, there is uh, some notes here, yeah, but I will cover it by, uh, sorry, bring it down, I'll cover it here. So, as we uh, got familiar with the FMC from the score and from starting of our course, like this here, the devices, the policies, objects, whatever. So now we are going to explain the configuration of the FMC. This panel is related to the FMC itself, like the configuration, the user's domain, integration, updates, smart, even the license you can uh, modify it from here, monitoring the health, etc. So our lecture today is this configuration. So we'll press on it. What we will find is, we'll find a lot of tabs. So we'll try to explain one by one as much as we can. The minute you click the configuration and you enter, it will send you directly to the information tab. This information tab had the name of the FMC that earlier you put it while the initial setup. Uh, product model the serial number okay the software version as i told you are working with 6.6.4 uh, operating system is cisco fire linux operating system great the ip address this is the management ip address ipv6 is disabled this is actually the initial setup that we did uh, current policies is health policies and the initial health policy here it's link you the date and time model number etc Fine, if you want to change, this is, I think you can change the FMC and you can go for the initial health and after that save. Pretty cool. So let me go to the first tab, access list. What is the access list? This is not the access list that we can see it here inside uh, the policy. No, this is the access list for the FMC. Initially and by default, you will be having two access lists. Uh, this is like permitting anyone to access the FMC. Like now, I will let you how uh, I will show you in a while how can I access the FMC not from the management uh, PC. Like for example, here let's go to our topology. Great. So in our topology here, these. This is the management PC from the same subnet of the FMC. So uh, I put them in the same range and I'm doing the configuration for the FMC and pushing to the FTD. Great. But this is the only solution that will, how can I configure the FMC? No, I can configure it from any VLAN allowed. I have to allow it. Okay, yeah, but I can configure it from this PC with the VLAN 10, from the server itself, from the PC in the VLAN 20. So actually, this access list will allow you, the default is allowed any, to access the FMC. Okay, the question now, do I, can I now access the FMC from the PC in VLAN 10 or from the server? The, the answer will be, sure, no, you cannot, because there is nothing configured for inter-VLAN routing. If you remember, the inter-VLAN routing will will let you to uh, communicate like uh, different VLANs to each other. But uh, with the firewall, you have to make an access rule for that, that to allow, for example, the DMZ to communicate with the FMC and FMC to communicate with the DMZ server. So we will see it now and we will uh, go to each one so let's continue here so 
if you want to add any rule like specific rule if you don't want it for any first of all add your rule and after that delete to both of them otherwise you will lose the connectivity and you will be in a big problem so you will add a rule here you will put the IP address you want and you can allow SSH HTTPS SNMP it depends what type of uh, connectivity you need so of course when we are uh, accessing the FMC from the web browser so we are using the HTTPS protocol uh, so great so leave it now for the default uh, access control preferences uh, well this is actually uh, nothing <laughs> I don't use it actually maybe like some people of course using it uh, what is this for? This is like when you are creating an access control uh, policy. When you want to save, what you will find? It will save, like directly it will save. But here, no. Here you can put, okay, you want the comment to appear for you, like the minute you click the save after finishing the access control policy that you wrote, uh, then you want the comment box to issue for you as an optional that hey you want uh, you forget to add anything in the optional comment so uh, the comment box so you want it optional or you want it required mandatory then you cannot proceed the access control policy unless you fill up something in the comments like uh, let's try it uh, like, let's make it optional save and if you can see like now just we saved here we saved where we saved in, uh, on the FMC itself so no need for the deploy because this configuration uh, specialized and specifically only for the FMC so let's go for example for the policy let's see access control policy actually I don't use these tabs but it's fine to see it so if we create for example uh, new policy let's see name test description nothing save no actually it's not like this no no i'm, I'm sorry i will delete it later but uh, go inside add rules for example mm. let me make an access rule because we will need it actually from the DMZ server now I have my access rule actually is for any any so let's make a DMZ server let's see for the uh, communicating the yeah insight for the intermediate routing and let's say name it is DMZ DMZ to insight or I want the DMZ to communicate with the management let's make it the management remove this Make the management at destination. Okay, so DMZ to okay, allow give everything here. Describing of changes option. So you want to write something here? I don't want to write, just cancel it. Add, sorry, press OK. So it will save because it's optional. Uh, now, if uh, you put it, of course, uh, as a mandatory, it will be mandatory. Leave page, yes, leave page. I don't want it because I was crying. So, this is the access control actually preferences. that we made hurry up hello let's 
so it was like the system was hanging it's fine so we finished the access list access control preferences now it's audit log I don't know what's coming to the configuration manager it's doing like weird behavior but it's fine audit log yeah, come on so audit log uh, finally it's here so actually for uh, the log to send the log here so this will be associated with like who the host uh, user facilities so severity for the logs okay what did this logs actually if you remember that like any log would be sent to uh, the server the, the the syslog server okay so it will it will say it will be sent like with an alert type so by here you can just identify like which server or syslog server you want the uh, the system logs to be sent over there and of course what is the type of severity that you need to send for example here you have to specify a syslog server mm. The, 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 the main condition here to have the reachability between your FMC and any syslog server that you want to create. So for simplicity, I will make this on the same management PC. Like I am here the FMC, I'm configuring the FMC. I will make my management PC this one, if this is log server. So by here, there is a software here. Okay, there's Kiwi syslog server. So the minute you set up any any syslog server, uh, any syslog software, so your PC will be considered as a syslog server. Uh, syslog up to five messages. Okay, up to five messages doesn't matter. Just uh, let me see the setup here. It will listen to the. UDB port 5.4 exactly because this is the listen port that it will be listening to. So, okay, it's ready, but there is no any syslog. So let's configure it and to see if it will be achieved. Okay, so it's enabled. My management PC is, as I remember, it's 100.10. Yeah, exactly. It's 192.160.100.10. One nine two dot one six eight dot one hundred dot ten facility um, make it user no problem severity okay send me the information for that tag no there is no tag send audit log to HTTP server no there is no HTTP server let's test it great so server has been reached okay so let's save okay it's saved right now automatically when it's saved start sending like the log for any kind of determine virtual account from smart agent some logs like information that you uh, send if you want, of course, to change the uh, facility that you want, you can change it. You can maybe put it like a syslog and for like just only the alert, for example. Save. And it will start like sending you like different, different type of that. So now starting like getting the new logs for this alert and then we like the host name with that, the priority is system info, info, notice, error. So this like will be your uh, syslog server basically. So 
edit uh, audit log certificate actually if you want it to be um, encrypted and uh, you want to make uh, uh, a self sign request uh, certificate for that yes of course you can just enable it if you need like this log to be sent encrypted you can enable it but here you need like a CA server that you can generate the uh, self sign uh, request and uh, after that uh, certificate sign request sorry and after that you would import it uh, to the CA server if you want it actually uh, this is as you like I, I will not maybe go like much deeper for that otherwise I have to prepare a video for that and I have to uh, make like a CA server to make it for you but it's not like that important uh, let's go for the change uh, reconciliation the send reconciliation actually this is a report that it can send you uh, to, for the past 24 hours what changes happened on the FMC from like the configuration changes what happened so it will be like a detailed report so but to configure this you need to configure your email that the email engine that has to be sent so let me jump to the email what is the email here mm, email email it was here somewhere uh, not here not, oh yeah email notification I will go back to the change reconciliation but I have to configure the email notification to make it here so it will tell you here mail relay host so it should be like uh, the mail relay host so let me put uh, mine for example mm, AMS 100 dot mm. I have a test one I think but, uh, okay then the port let me see here SSL no okay make it TLS the port number it should be 578 from address which address like you have to put the email engine that is going to send for example fmc at macoe.net Use authentication, username, it will be the same email. Copy paste here. Password, I hope that I remember. Let's make a test. Please enter an email address to send message tips. Okay. Let me see if it will. Ah, failed to send the message. Check your settings. And maybe the password is wrong. Okay. Let me just uh, reset the password and I will come back to you. So I reset the password. Oh, port number 578. No, 587 is mistaken. Sorry, 587. Assistant. Yes, now it's fine. So it's by my mistake, but it, uh, it will work in 587. There is no 578. It's fine. So the email now engine is configured right now. So any email and notification and alert would be sent will use this engine. So save. And after that, we will go back to the change reconciliation.
So in the change reconciliation, as we said, that it will send you like the report for the changes happened on the FMC. You can enable it and you can time to run. Like what time you want to this to send it to you. It's up to you. Uh, email, which email? It will be like, for example, if I put my email and you can put recent last report include policy configuration yes and show full change history yes uh, if you want like a recent last report if you need like something uh, something very quickly uh, there is no response send it's up to you here or there it will send it uh, let me tell you from my, my, my previous labs Actually, I did this. Let me open the email. Where's my email? Okay, here if we said from FMC. Okay, yes. So this is the report that it sent to you. Intrusion policy. Comparison report, uh, many things it will send. It will be like a long report for you. Fine. So, DNS cache, very simple, uh, nothing to talk about it. Uh, it will tell you, like, if you want to change the default for uh, how many DNS is caching uh, its record, the default is uh, five hours, 300 minutes. It's enabled by default. And uh, this is only uh, what's, what will allow you to do just to, to, to change like how many hours to cut the DNS. Dashboard. Let's see like what we have in the dashboard. Um, I don't like uh, the life would be very slow on this. Nothing enable uh, castle analysis widget. Yes, this is here in the overview. If you can, the dashboard you can customize uh, your widgets for that uh, database. Here, here it will tell you like the amount of storing uh, some parts of uh, uh, the FMC, like events uh, for intrusion, discovery, connection like how many events it can like store. For example, let's take it one by one quickly intrusion event database. Here by default support a million maximum intrusion events. So of course you can change it, but there is actually a limitation for that. If I put it two million to allow, let me see. Okay, I think it will allow for 2 million. Uh, actually, the default is the best here. Okay, and this is the, the best from the Cisco, so I need to change it. But let's see. If you put like 200 million. Should I accept all? Let's save. Actually, it has like a maximum. Uh, Cisco should uh, write here for us like the maximum. Okay, yeah, here the maximum error. Difference order at inclusion event database must be between uh, 10,000 and 10 million. Yeah, the maximum is 10 million inclusive. So it's fine. Uh, so here, after that, discovery event database. Like here, the uh, event for the database, like how many we can store, and it's written for you. Maximum discovery event is zero, do not store. So if you put zero, it means not store. Connection database, yes, like how many connectivity to be like in the uh, database and also security intelligence events. And these actually, like if you can, uh, if you want to change it and play, but no one uh, does that. So let me go to like email notification. We already finished it. Uh, external database access. Actually, if you want to customize your reports, uh, to uh, make like a special and fancy report by uh, Crystal Report, for example, uh, and you need to be like uh, have a programming techniques like uh, programmers that use Crystal Report to 
customize their fancy reports for that. So if you don't like the reports coming from the FMC, so you need to integrate it uh, with the Presta report. So you need to have a server, and uh, not a server actually, it's uh, a PC. Yeah, a PC could be fine. And could be having, uh, you will put the IP address for the PC. But here, the thing you like, you need to download a client JDBC driver. This is a driver you will click here, you will download it. And after that, you install it. Okay, I don't want to download it. And it is a must for you to add the host in the access list. So this actually will reflect to the access list. You need to actually add it, access list and the IP address that is allowing uh that pc server that has increased the report to uh, uh, to be accessed and communicating with the fmc if you are brilliant and uh, doing these such of configuration like crystal report and this stuff please go ahead with that uh, most most of the network engineers and security engineers does not uh, deal with that Anyways, HTTP certifications, actually the certification, I will uh, talk later about them um, because actually it is uh, not difficult, actually it's a little bit complicated, so I would like to prepare for you uh, exactly like the CA for that, uh, CA server and how we do it. But quickly to just explain what it is for, this is for any HTTPS you want to uh, visit so it has to be like a secure certificate for example we are entering the FMC through a browser this is a browser we enter it like HTTPS great but this one is not secure you have a security exception but this is not secure and here it's telling you the connection is not secure right so if you want to remove it you can remove it but what if I want my clients or uh, my engineers actually to be specific uh, to enter the fmc securely so here i have to generate a certificate for them this certificate has to be installed to their pc that they are logging it so uh, the certification agreement will be happened between the fmc and this pc and after that they can log in securely but uh, please when you want to enable it for the client, you have to enable like this for the client and you have to, to choose them. Don't do this ever. And this is recommendation actually by Cisco. Unless you install the certificate on the client. Otherwise, you will not be able to log into the FMC if you don't have the certificate. So create the certificate, install it in a client PC that you wanted to access the FMC securely. After that, enable this option. Great. Information, this is the default one that has, uh, we explained already, intrusion policy preferences. This is also when you are creating an intrusion policy, there is an optional and uh, for the comment, like what we did with the uh, access control preference. So here, this is uh, Disabled, okay, it's optional by default, maybe. Okay, disabled, required. So this is also, you can change it. This is for intrusion policy. Nothing serious, actually. Language, yes, you can change the language for that. There are like maybe four or five languages for FMC, put it for you. Let's see the languages. Yeah, there is US, there is Japanese, and there are uh, three other languages, great. Login banner, if you want to put like a banner for anyone accessing your FMC to write something for him, then you can do it. For example, if you said, hey, it's Miari, uh, welcome to my FMC world. Please. Oh my God. Please do not change any of the uh, configuration configuration 
unless you are expert for example save this is actually login banner like this is the banner like in Cisco which is uh, the banner that you can uh, put it by command uh, okay how to test it admin log out okay again access it hmm. hey it's me added this is the login banner that I put it great access So it will take me it will take me back okay to the dashboard no I want here the settings again the configuration it will automatically redirect me to the information tab okay so language login banner we change it like management interfaces here it's telling you that the interfaces the management interface like what we configured 192.168.102 that we are configuring the uh, FMC with and here like there are another interfaces if you want to make like a redundancy between the interfaces uh, or like in the previous uh, lecture that what I explained you can add another link and you can give it Alan and you can uh, let it go to the internet then all the updates and the connectivity with the Talus Cloud will be through this. So yes, you can do that. And you need to add the routing for it. Uh, and you need to save. Shared setting, this is your host name. If you want to add like a domain, you can add it. DNS server, these are two DNS. It's taken by like, I think, Cisco Umbrella. Uh, IPv6, if you want it. Proxy server, if you're... Uh, FMC has a proxy server and it has to go through then you will enable it and you will put the proxy for that network analysis, analysis policy preference this is again the comment for the network analysis that you want to make it uh, by default it's optional if you want to make it disabled or required okay process um, this is actually a good feature from Cisco that rather if you want to uh, reboot your FMC rather than to reboot it all in all because you know the FMC is very heavy so it will take a lot of time to uh, get rebooted and uptime so if you want like to shut down management center yes you can do it from here reboot management center from here restart management center console only so it will restart only the console not the management center all in all so it will uh, res uh, restart only this one. Okay, it's fine. Great. REST API, this is actually the integration with uh, some third parties. And uh, it's enabled like by default if you want something like for automation or many things like API to integrate it with the FMC. Uh, yes, it's enabled by default this option. Uh, remote storage device if you want to remote storage device okay storage type now it's storing here locally so if you uh, want to store like with uh, NFC and you have uh, NFS sorry and you have like uh, a shared folder uh, so you need to send like some storage there like a backup and reports yes you can do that um, we can actually try this option later when I prepare the Windows Server and the DMZ that we have and I will make like one one shared folder and we will see like how we can start storing over there okay but actually this is the uh, concept and of course you need to have a reachability between FMC and the story that you need uh, SNMP great Uh, sim simple network management protocol uh, this is sending uh, like the backup and reports uh, for the FMC uh, this is actually like needing for SNMP traps so like there are a lot of softwares doing that like uh, PRTG uh, Mega uh, there are like some software that 
uh, for that. So of course you can uh, integrate the FMC with uh, the SNMP server, like to make an SNMP server, and uh, it will start like send the information for the like adding device and sensor. So the traps will be. Uh, let us try it. Actually, I have I have the RPG in our server. So let me. Okay, version one version two like a simple version. Like mostly people are using version two because it's like simple. Version three it has like encryption. And uh, you have uh, again to add like a user and password and all this to uh, to send your uh, SNMP uh, information like securely. Uh, for now, I don't want. How can I close this? There is no cancel button. Oh, it's impossible. Let me press it again. <clears throat> okay, so let me enable version 2 community string. Put any simple password you need, like admin123, and press save. Okay, after pressing save, it will save this information only, but this is not enough. Actually, what you need to add the IP address of your SNMP server where in our lovely access list that I showed you before. So in the access list here, okay, let's make it here in Windows Windows Server in the DMZ, right? Uh, I'm giving it, I think, 192.168.30.200. So let me add the Windows Server over there. So here I have any any leave them as it is. So 192.168.30.200. They are in both different range. Um, enable SNMP only. You can if you want to access the FMC from the server. You can HTTPS. If you want to SSH, you can also SSH. So uh, press add. Uh, well, let's make it simple and make it SNMP. Okay. And here it will put you the port for 161. This is the uh, port that SNMP is listened to. Uh, and make it uh, save. Uh, yes, save. OK. Let me go to the server itself and to check if there are any connectivity. I have an IP address. Uh, let me do it from here. CMD IP config 192. Okay, 30 to 200. Great. It does not have internet. Yes, because we didn't put a policy for the DMZ zone. We will do it. But let's try to ping 192.168.168.100.2. FMC.100.2. It will not ping, of course. Why? Because there is no inter-VLAN routing. The inter-VLAN routing on the core switch, it will be like enabled by default. And if it's not enabled by default, you have to uh, put the command IP routing. So it will be communicating between the different VLANs. But in the firewall, no. What, how I can solve it? Then I can, I want to put a policy from the DMZ to the FMC and vice versa, from the FMC to the Windows Server. So let's do this and also let's do uh, put the Windows Server, the DMZ on the NAT to have the ability to go to the internet. So if I'm here in the, okay, this is successfully at. So let me check my policy, policy access control. Let me see what I have here in the access control. Okay. Yeah, this is, I promised you to delete it, but I forgot. So delete. Successfully, okay. So now here, this is my only policy that I have. Okay. The policy that I have is in to out. It means from inside to outside. And I put the inside DMZ and management towards outside. So for this, to go in the internet, 
this is apart so I don't have any problem but now I want to create another policy and be careful I'm doing the policy like as a simple I'm not doing any application control any security intelligence anything okay uh, so let me say from DMZ to uh, from DMZ to management okay allow allow okay here DMZ as a source management as a destination and add great okay this is what we did uh, DMZ2 okay and after that I will add another rule from management as a source this is the vice versa to DMZ as a destination and I will name it management to DMZ great add uh, regarding the networks just I'm simplifying things later on when we are doing like a, a purely access control policy then I will take care of the network but now the source and destination is any any add okay so I have these two access uh, link to enable the inter VLAN routing save so let's finally check the NAT actually this uh, the NAT just I want to get the DMZ to go to the internet this is nothing to uh, worry about the inter VLAN routing if I deploy the inter VLAN routing should be working perfectly so just deploy and it will take time so I will do it one shot uh, so go to the device NAT let me remember what NAT we have edit Uh, management and inside okay so let me do it for okay manual dynamic DMZ as a source and outside as a destination okay translation there will be like a dedicated video for the nothing so don't worry and that actually the same concept we took it a lot translated destination interface I colored it the outside great and nothing to worry more it's enabled everything is fine okay so I enable it save deploy Deploy again. Okay, it will take time. As what I told you, I will pause and I will come back to you. So it's completed right now. Uh, let's see the connectivity. Good uh, update. No, yes, there is internet here over there. I start asking for updates, so this is a good sign. Ping uh, 192.168.100.2, .100 pinging the FMC. Great. Then pinging it there and has internet. As you can see. Perfect. So let's go back. Uh, okay, I added. Great. I added here, right? I added the SNMP. Yeah, I added and I added the access list as well. Great. So let me here. I download here PRTG network, PRTG. So actually, PRTG is a very good software. I'm not marketing anything, uh, but uh, it's like allocating the. Um, the status of the uh, hardware that you have if you have like switches routers servers it will tell you the status of the uh, interfaces it's up down uh, if the power supply is got 
down if you have like, like it has many features alerting feature it can monitor all your infrastructure so this is actually the dashboard I'm not going to explain it uh, you can download it actually for uh, free for some sensors so if you want to test it yes you can do it so now let me add a device you can add device from here this there is device here or if you open here you can add device library sensor so first of all we need to add a device great so where is the device what is this actually how can I see this okay show me no I don't want you to show me actually doesn't matter uh, so in the devices here you, it's categorizing for you like a prop device network discovery uh, PRTG core sensor so even like PRTG is doing like some trick for itself so now we'll go for network discovery and our case is actually network infrastructure it's not a gateway it's not a VMware it's nothing because we are in the lab here inside so this PC and the connected to the switches so it's the same infrastructure so but I'm in the network so which network I have to decide it for him so now I will click on the network infrastructure um, network okay if I put right click mm, and no not add the group was not like that let me go to devices back here I should have a device yes this one a device so just don't click on it just right click over the mouse on it right click Add device great it will tell you what the device name so name it FMC device uh, okay FMC device IP version yes IP version 4 and I have to put the IP 192.168.100.2 here you they put so many like icons for the companies like APC, Fortigate. Here there is one for Cisco. It's good if you want to put it here, Cisco icon. It's nothing, just it's <laughs> something good. Um, I think yes, we are fine. But there is one option here I want you to show credentials for SNMP device. So this is yes you have to put it to determine the SNMP version that you are using so yes we are using version 2 community link it's public by default you know it's not public because I defined it here admin 123 SNMP port listen is 161 yes exactly I don't think so we need much so press ok so after that we will go here we should find this FMC device so add sensor or run auto discovery no add sensor so it will open for you for the sensor what type of sensor you want to add actually I want to add SNMP and this is what I care about okay so go down there are many types actually of the sensor that you want but here is thing your most used sensor is SNMP traffic because companies are uh, taking care of the traffic how the traffic on like winter's bandwidth and traffic on server PC switches like what the traffic happened um, yes I can add it why not and now let's start communicating with your FMC and I hope the communication will be like succeeded great it succeeded here so it's telling you that okay the tags would be like bandwidth sensor and this MP traffic sensor okay here automatically it's telling you that you have Ethernet zero is connected okay so you can select all disconnected you send this select all select all connected so it will be selected here down additional channels like errors and errors out like if you need like some channels for that 
then you can like surfing it and see whatever you want. Just I will write create. I click create, sorry. Okay, adding sensor. So the sensor is adding now. And it will start to listen on the port 161 as I gather the traffic. So now what's in status is okay. The uh, IP address is 2, 102, default 60 second, last recommendation 29 days. Okay, fine. Here the sensor. Okay, start like gather information. Let me go to devices back. To see what we have. Okay, here it's like traffic or either you can add another sensor. For example, if you want to check the ping, uh, many things you can do. So this is actually and start collect information about anything happened. So basically, this is yes, we succeeded with that. Uh, Okay, so SNMP quickly shield timeout. This is the shield timeout. Actually, there are uh, browsing session timeout. If you leave the FMC like that, no any movement, no any action, after one hour it will automatically log out. Maybe it's suitable for you like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it depends on you. Okay. Uh, this is still uh, time out in minutes like uh, if you connect it through uh, SSH uh, then like there is no any login time out okay it's set to zero so if you want to set from here it will be fine uh, time the most important thing to set your time in FMC because all the reporting and events will be based on that so if you can see here that like my time is wrong so basically you have to sit, uh, let me, okay, assume that the time is right for my PC, but here you can make time synchronization, or you can choose it from uh, your region, or you can change it manually, for example, it's here, uh, let me see, like if it's 6, 14, for example, Okay, apply okay it's applied log you out admin my lovely banner exit actually I'm sorry for that the video like is a little bit long but because it's inf informative and we are trying to apply maximum things that we have okay great so the time is set right now so here in the time this is in the time this is in the time synchronization it will tell you like if you want to integrate it with the NTP server. It will put for you like some NTP server. If you know like any trusted NTP server with a good uh, uh, start home, so you can put it and you can add it from here. NTP server, you can put it and you can keep the type for it, uh, the encryption type, etc. It's up to you. Uh, UCAP LCC compliance. Let's see what is inside it. It's enable compliance. Nothing important actually. I didn't uh, use it before and did pass through it. Uh, user configuration. So in the user configuration here, uh, simply it's going to be like password re reuse the limit. If you want to uh, put a limit for the reason the password so here it's sitting like everything like no limit but if you I want to uh, for example if you set the password for FMC like admin123 for example so then I can put for you like two then if you change your password and you you you, you change for password for example Cisco123 and after that you want to return it back to admin123 you can do it twice only uh, track successful logins, yes, uh, you can track successful, successful logins here, like all the people um, like login successfully, yes, what is the maximum value for that, zero, no tracker, actually, uh, why to track, if uh, the user login successfully, then good luck to him, 
maximum number of logging failure and yeah, this is could be like for you you will set the maximum number of login failure for example if i log in the password three times wrong so it will be blocked M maximum uh, concurrent session allowed uh, this is actually uh, two types it has like uh, the first type is for the user like has the privilege of read only we'll go back to like creating the user and giving permission for that uh, so uh, this is like how many how, how many concurrent sessions allowed uh, to access at the same time uh, maximum session for your users uh, with read write privilege okay for the user have like read write privilege they made it like they, they categorize it both ways it's fine uh, vulnerability mapping let's see what's in vulnerability mapping Actually, most of these like rarely people using this, so that's why this course thank you that you have to understand it. Actually, like uh, there are a lot of vulnerability that's coming from uh, uh, Talos server and has like its CF, uh, CVE for that. So it's here like Chinese P2P file sharing the problem the program. Uh, so if you want like enable like to map the vulnerabilities for that and after that you can scan based on that yes you can do that with analytics if you want to help uh, actually Cisco and set feeds for the some like uh, web analytics that the users like uh, using and what are the feeds from there yes uh, it's enabled actually by default set user information with Cisco yes Cisco will know like what is triggered like some people say, no, I don't want Cisco to know what people are surfing and viewing and open. So you can do that and you can make save it up to you. Um, actually, this is like the configuration management that we uh, covered with. Here, there is uh, something here in the admin. It is called user preference. When you put admin, there is a switch to classic, logout, user preference. Okay. So let me uh, switch to classic theme. This is actually the theme, uh, the theme changed to our theme that we are working after 6.5. So to display this page, Firefox must send information. Okay, recent. Oh, yeah, like Firefox does not want to. Yeah, this is actually the old uh, theme for the version, like the uh, old one. And this is here. You can find the devices up. This is the device management, NAT, VPN, QS, not like that, flex config. Uh, in the analysis, like this analysis, this is connection if you want to see the event reports. Uh, objects, these are the objects, object management. Like this is actually the theme, it's red one. Uh, so if you want to uh, use it, you can use it. Like someone is familiar with it and just now he upgraded the uh, uh, his firmware so he doesn't like the new one because he got used to use this one yes you can change it back otherwise uh, switch to light theme I like actually the light theme and it's more organizable and uh, brilliant so okay it's a change and something called like user preferences here it will give you like some preferences for the user for the UI theme this is the light the time zone it like the default will come right like for example here if I put the classic and then it will you apply it that this is the preferences for the users okay that you want this is the classic okay change password and then uh, also uh, you can like a change password time zone you can put like the time zone for him uh, home page okay so we start like customize everything like a preference for this opening screen so opening screen will be dashboard or you want it like to be the devices or you want to be like the reporting it's up to you uh, event view settings uh, dashboard setting then you are pre-setting uh, like the default for the user to uh, once he like login what he will see and what are the default it will appear like for him uh log out we said about like log out so why is like that switch to live theme maybe the video now is one hour 
I will end it up in a while. So users are here domain. It's fine like for this video. Actually, uh, sorry for the long video, but I hope it was like informative and we try to uh, apply the maximum that we can uh, apply with. So uh, please uh, try to uh, subscribe, like and share and wait for me with the new video. Thank you very much.